Okay. So we'll start with um, uh, the data science concepts. Okay. We'll talk about what what is data science and what do we expect, uh, you know, in the in in in, in this uh, last leg of our discussion. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So um, see, so if you look at the process as such, okay, data science starts with data collection. Okay. Um, you, you talk about, uh, you know, collecting data from various sources. So generally, uh, the, the, um, the first process, okay. Now before that, okay. Uh, you know, if you look at life cycle of data science, okay, if you type life cycle of data science, first stage is called a uh, business objective, right? We have yeah. discussed that anything that you do, okay, has to be derived from business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So before mm -hmm. you start doing any kind of analysis, you need to start from the business as such. Okay. So what is that business want? Okay. And then what you have, what you can do. Okay. All those things will come later, but first, what is that business is looking for? Mm -hmm. That should be the first priority. Okay. That okay. should be the first priority. And from there, then we derive, okay, different aspects. So, as I said, first is the business objective. And based on the business objective, you'll start collecting the data. If the objective is to predict sales, okay. And now data science objectives are all about what will happen. Okay, mm -hmm. it's all about futuristic thing, not what happened, what mm -hmm. will happen. Yeah. So the question comes like, what will happen? That's when you know that data science concept I have to use. Not mm -hmm. whatever we have discussed so far. Whatever we have discussed so far is all about what happened. So this programming is going to be different. Okay, how it is going to be different. So far, what we have done in programming was that the output was always fixed correct okay. okay if you apply a formula and if you run it 100 times you get same answer correct okay. so mm -hmm. far what programming we have done for last i don't know three four months mm -hmm. <laughs> so the programming has been fixed it's called deterministic um, uh, mathematical model okay deterministic okay. mathematical model like all your algebra addition subtraction uh, um your trigonometry, calculus, all these are deterministic mathematics. That means if you perform an operation, you get an answer 10. Now you mm -hmm. do it a thousand times also, you'll get 10 only. Okay. okay. It will not be different. But in this case, it's going to be different. Why? Because you're talking about future, right? Mm -hmm. What will happen tomorrow? So what you think in the morning, today morning, what you think about what will happen tomorrow, suddenly it will change by the time your evening comes. Yes, yeah. Because you'll have much more visibility, much more clarity on what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So as you go along, your clarity about what's going to happen tomorrow will change, obviously, will hopefully for the better, right? I mean, in the yeah, sense yeah, that you know, you're know you getting a better mm -hmm. uh, visibility. So something, visibility. it is difficult mm -hmm. to predict what will happen after, you know, uh, next month, then what's going yes. to happen yeah. now, or maybe in, in our one hour, or what's mm -hmm. going to happen in tomorrow right yes yes mm -hmm. so that's why businesses they do a different level of forecasting okay they do mm -hmm. annual planning they do monthly planning why because annual planning is to get rough idea or this is how mm -hmm. the business is going to be for next year but as you do quarterly planning or monthly planning you will have much better uh, view on the data you will have much better understanding of the data so as you do this planning right and see one year planning is not accurate, doesn't stop you from doing the planning because it's to get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you may not yeah. know exactly what's going to happen next year, but it's always good to have some idea. Okay, that's yeah, it. This, this is what's yeah. going to happen next year. It, it's always mm -hmm. better that you get some idea, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, to so set I, some goals, uh, goals to exactly. Them. Okay, you can set your goals, you know, at least you know which direction you want to go, whether you want to from business, let's say you want to expand or you want to you know focus on profitability or you want to profit you know profit on uh, you want to focus on uh, revenue right those kind yeah. of things you can and because see when you start setting up a factory you cannot do it tomorrow okay i need to yeah. expand factory let's do it okay this mm -hmm. you need to plan 
a day or oh, sorry a year in advance year or mm -hmm. two years in advance so yes. this is what we are talking about in terms of planning data science yeah okay. uh -huh. Plan, For, planning forecasting yeah. rather forecasting okay yeah. so forecasting mm -hmm. and as i said as you go closer as you go closer your forecasting error will come down your forecast is going to become better mm -hmm. so whenever uh um so whenever you know you see the about forecasting okay i think it's you know it it has to be with machine learning right okay yes yeah mm -hmm. we, okay All right now mm -hmm. uh, okay so this so first thing is okay business objective and you know okay uh, this is what we need to do then you start collecting the, the right data okay now data from various source we have a role called data engineer they they are data experts right they collect data from various source and you know they they of course they they work now after you get the data okay mm -hmm. that's where your uh, data cleaning uh, work needs to be done okay mm -hmm. now in data cleaning what happens you need to look at if the data that you have got is complete okay mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. the uh, right columns you have the right if uh, you know um volume right kind of data right so you need to look at complete data and it should not have outliers okay and we when we get into you know do, doing okay so we, we in this class we're going to do from that stage three okay we're not going to talk about uh business subject we have already spoken about it right when we were doing machine uh analytics we will not talk about data analytics because you have already done how to get data from database and things like that we'll start from mm -hmm. stage three about data cleaning okay so once you clean the data when the data is ready okay then step number four is called eda so eda is basically whatever we have discussed in uh, uh, data visualization okay so you need to perform those things like you know scatter plot histogram all those things you perform because that will tell you the relationship between data Mm -hmm. are these data related okay? okay does one data impact another if they impact by how much should should they be used in the analysis or not these kind of decisions you have to make which column should should you input or should you take in the analysis mm -hmm. right okay. so mm -hmm. these are the factors these are the things that you need to take into account right okay. so that's why eda is very important part once you perform eda now you know which columns to use in the analysis okay now if, okay. if let's say if factor a does not impact if in the eda you see that there there is no correlation between them if you see that there is no correlation between them then there is no point of putting that in your analysis if there is no correlation uh, then why even put yeah, it there is we can derive anything out of it yeah. correct Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so e, um, sorry, EDA abbreviation. Uh, well, exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis. Yeah. Okay. So it's this, okay. It is, uh, um, uh, you know, data yeah, analysis. Those, um, the plots that we did and all that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Trying to see if there is relationship between the data we are analyzing. Correct. Uh, okay. Exactly. Okay exploring the data okay. yeah okay oh, yeah mm -hmm. so once you are uh, you 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 know once you are good with it okay the next thing is that you need to perform machine learning modeling the actual machine learning what we do is stage number fifth right mm -hmm. it's stage number five okay stage five is when you uh, build okay or you start um, um, uh, you know um, uh, making this model now okay yes, sir, this... you are only sharing the powerpoint right are you yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharing... no no okay. no i'm not sharing uh, okay. yeah okay. so the modeling okay i have a slide which i'm going to talk about okay mm -hmm. you know that's what we do in the modeling okay now okay. M modeling also has um uh, you know like 
two parts to it. One mm -hmm. is modeling and then second part is evaluation of the modeling. How do you know the modeling that you have done is good? Should you accept your own work or not? Oh, okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. here we, we also talk about how well you have done the modeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So model evaluation is important because we have multiple models. Okay. We have multiple models. We need to figure out which is the best model. Okay. Based on your analysis. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And we are going to learn at least in our class only, we are going to learn almost like 20 models. Okay. And there are, mm -hmm. of course, many more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. out of these, how do you choose which is, um, which is the right approach, the right uh -huh. one. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's why we say that, you know, you need to understand, see, uh, before you perform the model, you need to understand every uh, aspect of the model. Hmm. Then you think, then you will know what is the right approach. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. okay. If you if you learn only one method, then, you know, you think that, you know, this is the only way to do it. Which is obviously not, right? So, mm -hmm. that's why I focus on learning all the approach first. And then for the given situation, you think which is the right one. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so that's the model. And once you run the model, okay, you need to evaluate the model. Then you pick that, okay, this model is the best model for this. Now, why I say is predicting car sales is different than predicting rice sales, right? Or maybe your pen sales, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, the factors on which car depends, mm -hmm. algorithm which car will use is different than predicting a pen. Probably yes, predicting yeah. a pen is more stable. stable predicting yeah. diaper, okay. Uh, is mm -hmm. supposed to be the most stable <laughs> prediction. Okay, yeah, yeah, it needs to true. predict. Okay, mm -hmm. probably you can predict up to uh, ninety percent, ninety five percent, ninety nine percent. But car, mm -hmm. lot of things. Petrol price yeah, goes no. up, and things will change. Right, your mm -hmm. GDP goes down, and things will change. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay, so they are they are different. They are different ways. So that's why okay, you cannot have same model predicting all the things. Right. Yes. So you have to, that's why next thing is evaluation. You evaluate the model and model evaluation is equally good as model performance. In fact, sometimes model evaluation is more important than choosing a model. Okay. Because, let's see, um, let's say you attempt for an exam. Okay. Some certification exam. We all know preparing well for the exam is good. Right, more you prepare, better it is. That's that's called model building. But you prepared well, but you don't go and write the exam well. Then your preparation has gone waste, isn't it? It is important that you perform in the test also. So that's why you know bad example, but just to tell you that model evaluation is generally considered more important than running a model. Running a model is easy. There are algorithms, you take the algorithms, put in the value and start using. Okay, easy. But model evaluation is where you have to use your brain a little bit. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. like uh, I went, uh, my, yeah, this uh, oh. Zoom thing restarted for me. Oh, for oh okay. Reason. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just repeat. So, so uh -huh. what I was saying is after model building, okay, next step is model evaluation. Yeah, model okay. evaluation. And what I was saying is model evaluation is more important than model building. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah. More important in the sense, at least equally or more important because model building for us, it's easy because there are algorithms. Okay. And you'll get algorithms from internet. You copy the algorithms, you run it and you get some output. But mm -hmm. problem comes, how do you know that output is good or not? Mm -hmm. Right, model evaluation you can't copy from internet. So, model when we talk about algorithms here, are they similar to the software engineering algorithms that we like binary search, uh, bubble sort? Right, it's, it is yeah, much like complex that? than that. Oh, okay, okay. okay. it is, is a much totally different algorithms, total, like totally that. different. Oh, but, okay. good thing for us is that all these things are available for us, like a function. 
Oh. So we will oh, call the function only. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. in our class, we're going to learn about the logic behind the function. What mm -hmm. actually those function does. Oh, okay. And okay. what you can, if you are interested, you can mm -hmm. go into the mathematics of those models. Oh, nice. Okay. 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 So mathematics, we are not going to go into. We are mm -hmm. going to know what the logic or that, you know, which kind of logic it uses to give the solution. Okay. So, yes. Okay. So, I was talking about model evaluation. So, you have run the model, you got the answer, but how do you know? So, I think that you can copy the algorithm from internet. Okay. You can run it. But how do you know what you did is right or not? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. where model evaluation That's comes into picture. Evaluation. Yeah. And once you perform the model evaluation, the next step is to, now that you know, okay, now mm -hmm. that you know, hello, yeah, so yeah, not that, I thought I, again, maybe, oh, no, 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 I think okay. Um, okay. it was me, okay, okay, so uh, I was saying that if once you know, okay, once you know, um, you know, um, that this model is best, okay, once you know this model is best, okay, the next step is to deploy it. Mm, yeah, deploy it, uh, yeah. Okay, deploy it. Now, so this is the entire life cycle of your, um, a, you know, of uh, machine learning model. So okay. business objective, then... Uh... Gathering the data, cleaning it, and then doing exploratory analysis on it. And after that is model building and then um, evaluating the model and then deploying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, okay, so these are the process. So what we're going to learn, we're going to learn um, model uh, cleaning, data cleaning, EDA, okay. developing okay. the model, deploying the, mo uh, sorry, uh, choosing the best model, and maybe towards the end, I'll just show you how to deploy on the cloud. Okay, That is just a half an hour, one hour job. That's not a big deal. Big deal is to find out which is the best model. Model, yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, so now let's get into this. We all know. Uh, I wanted to take you to a slide here. Okay, this is the model uh, talking about the life cycle. Oh, life cycle. Understanding the business problem, preparing the data, preparing the data means cleaning the you know getting the data and cleaning also same stage. Uh -huh. Then you perform EDA, then model the data, evaluate, and deploy, and this goes on, right? Um, the slide which I want to show is not here. Wait, just give me a second. We have 30 minutes, right? Another 30 minutes? Yeah, actually, I got ready. So until 8.30, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So I just one slide which I wanted to show you today. So that from tomorrow, okay. we can start, uh, you know, hands on. Uh, mm -hmm. just give me a second. I'm not sharing the screen, right? 
Yeah, it's not. A PowerPoint is not. Um... Yes. Now you see. Uh, my... uh, now I see. Uh -huh. Okay. So these okay. are different types. families of mod model. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. You start with machine learning. Okay. Now this will give you a lot of clarity. Okay. Okay. So this okay. this starts with machine learning types. And then in types, you generally have three main types or four types. Okay. Mm -hmm. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Okay. Four you know, types of learning. Supervised mm -hmm. learning is... Uh, so does uh, chat GPT come into reinforcement learning? Uh, chat GPT okay. will come into um, reinforcement learning, yes. Okay. Now, um, now, why it is reinforcement learning? I'll tell you. And okay, probably okay. once you understand, it becomes easy. Okay. Yeah. Here, you see, see, in first three model, we are not talking up. We are not talking about um, um, text. It's either oh. it's all about structured data. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. It's about structured data. So now the chat gpt also okay the output is converted into structured data so they mm -hmm. have something called as tokens oh, okay. okay so the mm -hmm. uh, so what they do is okay they'll they'll create one word right uh -huh. that's one token is created one token is like one categorical information is presented now the next word is is predicted what will happen what would come next and then what we come next okay so yeah at a very basic level it's like what you call as markov chain which is again reinforcement learning uh, markov chain yes oh, okay so markov chain talks about okay it's a chain okay which okay. talks about that the what happened now is going to influence your next decision oh, just like a human <laughs> uh, wow Okay. Yeah, let's say uh, the weather for tomorrow, if I ask you, right? Yeah, yeah. So, now I'll see outside and say it's sunny. <laughs> so mostly it would be sunny tomorrow. Tomorrow, Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. So you, are, so, uh, you know, what happened today will have more say on what will happen tomorrow. What mm. happened yesterday will have little less say for what happened tomorrow, isn't it? Yes. So you are looking at, so stock price prediction. Okay, same concept, stock price prediction also. Stock price prediction, what will happen tomorrow, okay, or next five minutes, or next two minutes, okay, is dictated by what happened. Now, you have to find out the pattern. It's not that if it's increasing, it'll always increase. So, you, you might find a pattern that after 10 minutes of increase, it goes down for two minutes, for example, just I'm saying. After, you know, if it's going up for 10 minutes, it'll go down for two. That's the pattern that you are seeing. Okay, so like that, you'll have to find out multiple patterns and then you're able to predict. Okay, so let's uh, see. So supervised learning is where you have the data, you are learning from past. Okay, are you there? Sorry, I'm back. I don't know why it's getting. Uh, may maybe, you know, uh, you had any problem with the internet or something? Yeah, I mean, we had like a storm like um, um, uh, the day before. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, after that, little bit of issues with the internet again. Yeah, yeah, that could be the problem. No issues. Yeah, I'm now catching. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first type is what we call as um, supervised learning. Okay. Uh -huh. The supervised learning is learning under a supervisor. Okay. The example that we are doing, right? I'm going to tell something, right? I'm trying to 
convey machine learning concepts to you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the supervisor, right? So mm -hmm. same way, machine also learns. Now, who's the supervisor for machine? The data. Oh, okay. okay. So you have data which will help you to uh, learn. Now, if you look at the example here, okay, uh, and once I think once we take the example, then it becomes easy, uh, you know, how supervisor and supervisor are different. Okay, so supervised algorithm can be used to predict both continuous target value variable that is your numeric data, okay, hmm. or categorical variable. Numeric data like um, how many, right? How how much should I pay for this? What will be the price of my land tomorrow or after five years? Mm -hmm. When you are trying to predict a number, number can take any form, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Number can mm -hmm. take any form. So as long as you're talking about numbers, okay, it is supervised learning. Supervised learning, okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, then you also have categorical value. Categorical value means yes, no. Will, mm -hmm. will uh, you know, somebody has come to your store, you want to predict whether that person is going to buy your product or not. Mm -hmm. Right? So, mm -hmm. buy product or not. So, that's again, supervised learning. So, you have, so, you, what will do, you will refer the past data and you will see what happened in the past and then you will correlate. That's how they are, that's how, that's supervised learning. Supervised learning is Going through the past data, you there? Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting Again, something. suddenly it became blank. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, no problem. Yeah, I'm, here, I'm trying to understand. No problem. And, yeah. yeah. So here also, you're trying to look at what mm -hmm. happened, okay, in the past. Based past. on that, you're trying to, yeah, based on that, you're trying to correlate. For example, correlate. Uh, housing price prediction you see. Okay. Mm, yeah. In housing price prediction, you want to predict how much, let's say you bought a land. Okay. You mm -hmm. bought a land because you expect the price of the land to go up. Right. Uh, you yes, could have yeah. invested in mutual fund or real estate. Why mm. did you pick land? Because you expect the price of the land to go up more than the, you know, the price of your mutual fund. Mm. You must have done some calculation, isn't it? And you yes, figured yeah. out that my land price might increase by 25%, whereas you know, mutual fund will increase only by 12%. So you're getting a additional 12% benefit. That 12% is an example of continuous variable, numeric data. And how do you know okay. it's by 12% or 25%? Because that's what you have seen in situation in the past. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Right? Now, mm -hmm. see, price of the land can go, can increase by... 2%, 5%, 10%, 90%, 100%, 100% also. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you are trying to compare the situation that you are in versus mm -hmm. what happened, you know, at some other place. Mm -hmm. Oh, in Hyderabad, this is what happened when the airport came, the price became double. Yeah. And yeah. you are mm -hmm. expecting a price, you know, airport to come in New in your city. Mm -hmm. So you are creating that link, you are correlating it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is called as supervised learning. You have mm -hmm. some data to correlate. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you do not have data to correlate, then it is not supervised learning. Mm. Then it becomes unsupervised learning. We'll come to that. But okay. when you do not have data to correlate, it is supervised. Mm. When you have data so, to correlate, it becomes it supervised is, learning, right? Supervised. So uh -huh. housing price prediction is about number prediction. Okay, and the algorithm that we use is called regression. Oh, algorithm called regression. Right. Uh -huh. So now you know when data is there in the past and mm -hmm. you are trying to predict. One second. Mm Okay, so so yeah. okay, so what is important here is regression. So regression. when you see the problem, okay, you mm -hmm. need to figure out. Oh, I need to perform regression algorithm here. Oh, and regression okay. is again a family. Okay, here regression also will have tens of algorithm. Oh, 
ओके बट यू आर फिल्टरिंग आउट नॉन रिग्रेशन एलगोर्थम okay okay uh -huh. when do you get uh, regression when it is supervised data that means you have passed data and your objective is to predict numeric value how many mm. people how much percentage what will be the cost price how what will be the profit these mm. kind of thing how many people will come to my store okay mm -hmm. these are all examples of your continuous target variable where of target means that is what you are trying to predict and and mm -hmm. all of these talks about one single target variable you are not going to mm -hmm. predict two things together how many people mm -hmm. will come and how much profit i'll make no mm -hmm. you have only one okay how uh, many people will be visiting okay yeah only one uh, target variable. variable target variable okay. oh okay yeah. so then we use a regression algorithm fixed mm -hmm. Now, in regression which one to use that will go to your model evaluation oh i see okay okay mm -hmm. then comes categorical variable medical imaging okay mm -hmm. now let's say you you took an x ray and machine has to predict whether you know the 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 patient whose image is there like machine will have tons of images right mm -hmm. okay it has to predict whether the bone is broken or not that's a simple one yeah bone mm -hmm. is broken or not yes or no mm -hmm. now the machine would have been fed by x rays before okay yes they would have said ki this x ray bone is broken this x ray bone is not broken x ray bone is broken x ray bone is not broken bone is broken so you have passed data data for which you know the answer mm -hmm. right so i should know that what happens when airport comes in a area yeah by how much mm -hmm. percentage the land price increases when airport comes in the area okay if you don't know that means you are not in from this field but you know but who is doing the real estate business day in day out he'll be able mm -hmm. to tell you okay what happens when airport comes how much percentage mm -hmm. increases that is called past and you are trying to correlate it with that in future same way in classification like in medical imaging you are training machine with the known values before now you say mm -hmm. okay machine now you have learned now start predicting for me Oh, now okay. the machine will start predicting for you so i heard names like labeling the images and all correct that labeling here. images is classification okay. exactly classification okay okay, okay? so labeling mm -hmm. is supervised non labeling is unsupervised there is no label you don't know okay uh -huh. unsupervised okay. So oh, there is no labeling then it's unsupervised okay all right now mm -hmm. i'll give you an example okay uh let's say i i you know i buy a lot of fruits okay apple mm -hmm. guava mm -hmm. mango mm -hmm. and uh, say banana apple mm. guava mango and banana mm. i buy these four types of fruit but many you know a uh, lot of such fruit and i mm. put it at the center of of a room mm. and i give you four buckets or four bags i mm. ask you to put banana i have labeled them okay uh. apple banana mango guava and i ask uh. you to put all guavas in the guava bag all banana in banana bag mango in mango bag apple in apple bag can you mm -hmm. do that yeah we can do that can we, do we that. can do that without even labels right because we are already trained <laughs> uh, to uh, recognize uh, okay yes but you know but when you pick you don't know which bucket to put isn't it ah oh, okay you, you know yeah. that okay uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. banana uh -huh. but uh -huh. you don't know which bucket to put correct yes yes only if labels are there we know which bucket to put yes okay that's why we call it as labeling okay okay now okay. let's see this i get four fruits lots of them from uh -huh. africa some some remote island and uh -huh. we have never seen those fruit you oh, have yeah, never then... seen i have never seen <laughs> we don't know the names okay yeah. now if i ask you to put them in four different bags can you do it uh maybe we will try to then use like their characteristics like exactly. okay all the red red ones exactly. or green ones to go into exactly that. still you can do it because their shape size color would size, be different yeah. right okay. yeah uh -huh. so uh -huh. you can segregate them but you can't yeah. label them you can't call label. them oh this is fruit a uh -uh. yeah we can okay so there is a fine difference between 
classification and clustering classification oh. also does same thing mm -hmm. okay clustering also does same thing what grouping grouping of similar items but oh, okay. in classification you know what the group is oh, okay. in clustering okay. you don't know that group is oh, because nobody taught you before mm. nobody okay. taught you before what clustering is when nobody taught you before what clustering is then you cannot group them together. I mean, see, you can group yeah, them together, yeah. but you can't mm -hmm. label them. You can't say that this label is apple, them. this is banana. You can't say. Oh, yeah, that's true. But still, mm -hmm. you have group them. And you can give any group. You say, oh, mm -hmm. this is type 1 fruit, type 2 fruit, type 3 fruit, type 4 fruit, or group A, group B, group C, group. We can give, you can give any name. But that mm -hmm. name, okay, we don't know. So, but in supervised learning, since you have been trained, you know the past data, okay. If this is the shape, this is the size, this is the color, this is apple. If this is the shape, size, color, this is mango. That's oh. where the difference between Sorry. supervised learning and supervised learning. So if you have to predict whether the patient has a broken bone or not, whether the patient has a problem or not, okay, yes, no. You need to know whether it is yes or no. Okay, we use supervised learning and you have classification algorithm. Now, coming to unsupervised, because you don't know, nobody taught you, the target variable is not available. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. know what the output is going to be. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, here, yeah, that's target true. variable is not known. Okay? Instead, what you do, okay, you talk about segmentation grouping. Okay? Now, if a uh, classic example is uh, what you see, customer segmentation, Let's say Amazon, okay, mm -hmm. uh, wants to predict, okay, who is going to buy, uh, you know, you, when you log into Amazon, it tells you, right, you know, you, you might also be interested in, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It, it says yeah. you might it, be interested yeah. in. It will suggest to us all those, uh, yeah, yeah. predictions. Customer, uh -huh. yeah, customer like you has also bought this. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Customer mm -hmm. like you has also bought this. Now, when you hear such things, how does Amazon know who is customer like you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what it does is, based on each individual's characteristic, it will do the grouping. Now, here you don't have to know the name of the group. <coughs> so, let's yeah, say if your buying behavior is same as my buying behavior. Okay. We buy same um, type of cloth. Uh, okay, I mean, same type of product. Let's say we buy same cloth. We buy around same time of the month, same time of the year. Okay, uh, maybe the price range is also same. Okay, then you know, oh, these two customers are alike. I like you put um... them in one group. Okay. <clears throat> now, you're in the same group, but it doesn't. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, uh, you know, um, make any sense even if you don't know the group. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. As long as you know that these are in the same group, it's enough for you. See, if I tell you put them in a labeled bag, then you are wondering what should you, what should you do. Right? But if I just say you segregate them, then you don't need to know the name. Yes. Yeah. So when you, uh, that's true. Yeah. Right? So uh -huh. yeah. So when you segregate them, okay, this is what unsupervised learning is doing. You are segre segregating them, and you are doing it using clustering. So mm -hmm. clustering will only tell you these ten things are alike, these twenty things are alike, these ten things, you know, fifteen things are alike. Okay. Now it's up to you what you call it. Okay. That's yeah, called clustering. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then another type of unsupervised algorithm is called association. Which hmm. two products are alike? Which two okay. products are alike? Okay. Or they are associated. Now, when you go to these retail stores, they always tell you, you know, uh, buy this, get this free. Right? Mm -hmm. Why do they yeah, say yeah. buy this and buy, uh, get that free? Because they, they see that these, these two products are associated. 
associated um, okay mm -hmm. that means they they go through the bills of each customer mm -hmm. and they see that 70% of people who bought a who bought uh, say milk also mm -hmm. bought eggs bread yeah mm -hmm. and it's eggs. a bread mm -hmm. okay 70% of people who bought milk also bought bread that means bread and milk are associated closely so you will say that buy milk and get bread free <laughs> then people you know so oh, okay yeah, it's yeah. a good deal mm -hmm. if i say buy milk and get shoes free or buy shoes and get milk free it will not appeal to the people because mm -hmm. those who come to buy shoes may not be there to buy milk okay yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't it doesn't okay um uh, it it um, it you know it doesn't uh, excite to people yes yeah right? if they are not mm -hmm related okay and mm -hmm. you will not get a uh, good uh, mileage out of it anyways okay so that's called association where you figure out which two products are linked now here for this you just need to know which are linked you don't need to know the history geography of all those things correct mm -hmm. you have the data you see which are linked and it is enough okay that's called association then you have classification and clustering but these are part of semi supervised so semi supervised means you are mi using mix of both supervised and unsupervised okay oh, mm -hmm. so okay so here also you have classification and clustering how is this different this classification different than the main classification here when you see classification it means that you are using clustering first and then you are using classification and clustering means you are using classification then clustering okay mix of both how i'll tell oh, you okay, so okay. text classification okay let's say you have handwritten notes and you want to classify whether it's a b c or d Okay. okay now technically speaking this is a classification problem why because you need to know that you know this is a this is b you need to have the label mm, mm, mm. okay you need to yeah. have the label right label, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so you, it's a classification problem but mm -hmm. you have so many handwritten notes isn't it different shapes and size some will write slanting some will write bold some you know, strong and things like that so mm -hmm. before you actually start classifying each one of them as a you need to group them first you know you are kind of clustering them oh these are similar mm -hmm. okay. okay these are like similar. all the cursive writing as one like exactly. normal some some kind of grouping we need some to kind of grouping up. and okay. say these these are alike that's the first step mm -hmm. you have to do then you say mm -hmm. oh these groups are alike and we'll call it as a then you are putting okay. a classification label on the top of it. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Okay, because it's so so different. It's not like all mangoes. All mangoes yeah, yeah. size may be different, but shape will be same. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. not that difficult. But here it is difficult. That's why you need some kind of clustering technique to group, and then you use classification to label it. Oh. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Then comes to this yep. uh, lane finding on GPS data. Now, when when you are in GPS, how does it know that you know road is ahead? Mm -hmm. So first, mm -hmm. okay, it has been trained on how road looks like, how field looks like, how river body will look like, you know, how the signal will look like. It has been classified first, each of these things. And now, when you oh. know that, okay, this is how road looks like. On the map, when it is rolled, okay, only on that mm -hmm. portion only your car will it will show as that you have to go. Mm -hmm. You cannot deviate mm -hmm. from road to the green uh, to the green field because mm -hmm. it has been taught that okay, this is road and your car has to stay on road. Car cannot fly in the air or go in the water or go into the fields. Mm -hmm. So first, you have trained them that this is, you know, this is. Uh, water this is air this is field and then you are kind of doing classific mm. uh, you know Classic. clustering yeah. to saying that yeah. when it is road only i mean you know this is where you have to be there so again using mix of both classification and clustering, and clustering. Mm -hmm. okay then mm -hmm. comes reinforcement learning reinforcement learning is about learning from feedback mm. okay there's no past data but you do something and if you get the desired result you will do more and when you don't get the desired result you don't do it see mm -hmm. uh, you know um, 
parents will scold us right because they don't mm-hmm. want us to do that you scold your child right mm-hmm. you show mm-hmm. eyes and you kind of show that you are angry because you don't want her to do those thing yeah and we, and we when we child does good we appreciate them we appreciate mm-hmm. because we want them to do that more yes this is called feedback learning reinforcement learning oh okay okay mm-hmm. okay so when you play a chess okay you think of mm-hmm. every move right yeah, yeah you think mm-hmm. which move will give you the best result yes yeah then mm-hmm. you play a move mm-hmm. right sometimes yeah. you might feel like killing someone but mm-hmm. then you realize oh if i kill the police will catch me Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so like you stop. That's your reinforcement learning because you are not doing because there is a negative thing associated. Mm. Okay, you do well at your work because mm. if you do well at your work, you get promotion. You'll get promotion. hike. Hike, yeah. Right mm-hmm. now, if you mm. do not want promotion, if you don't want hike, your performance will drop automatically. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Okay. If you don't want the job, let's say. then your performance oh, yeah. will drop automatically that's, that's okay. feedback yeah. okay feedback. Uh-huh. same thing happens with algorithms also algorithms will also see the feedback am i doing mm. well am i doing well answer mm. is yes okay okay mm-hmm. it's a classic example the driverless cars which are getting developed mm-hmm. is actually based on reinforcement learning okay oh okay so cars. if they see um uh, you know a person on the road camera will sense a person and mm-hmm. you know that okay if i don't stop I, i'll kill the person if i don't kill the i mean if i don't stop and kill the person that's not what we want okay mm-hmm. they'll be trained not to kill anyone right okay. at no cost you can kill someone right okay. that okay. is in, no see that's weird. i'll tell so, you uh, so the mm-hmm. algorithm will uh, will make a, i mean will develop a feedback for itself like it sees some yes uh, okay, okay. it's so, just like how we we think in our heads like exactly you know? that was the point i was trying to make next mm-hmm. so the the way it is different than what we have done so far is what mm-hmm. we have done so far is all about if else if else if else if this is the mm-hmm. thing do this if this is the that do this okay but mm-hmm. by doing if else if else it you know you cannot actually fully train someone take for example your kids only Hmm. if you start giving instructions for everything very small thing then they won't very yeah, small yeah. thing mm-hmm. okay then what happens is one main thing is you cannot cover everything in the world yes okay? yeah that's if you can true. cover everything in the world then best thing oh this is it do this you know and it is very easy for your kids or your friend or whoever it is easy for mm-hmm. us also to figure out okay mm-hmm. okay everything yeah, my, okay uh, anger daughter keeps asking should i do this or should i do that like pick what or two mom <laughs> i right. tell her you you should make the decision <laughs> exactly okay pick what you want yeah correct now if it is everything in the world is easy to be, can be said then it becomes easy you know you don't have to think or oh, this think, is what yeah. my mother said if this is it you should do it okay do it great but not yeah. everything in the world can be said same thing with driverless car not everything all the instructions or all the driving instructions can be given to a drive, to to the car Mm-hmm. if you start building car with giving all the instructions then what happens you cannot cover all the instructions one your program will be 100 million lines of code mm-hmm. right and still mm-hmm. you have not given all the instructions and when that situation comes mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. you know your car fails okay. instead you make them learn what is good what is bad okay. and then say do good don't do bad okay mm-hmm. so you are giving this gift and this is how i told you machine learning is different than other algorithm okay oh, yeah. Here, oh, okay machine yeah. can take different action in different situation okay same mm-hmm. situation different action as a human being what i could do in a situation 10 years back probably today in same situation i would do, i can i'll do something different mm-hmm. right different definitely right mm-hmm. probably yeah. better right yeah better but yeah. my if my mind has gone for bad then i'll do worse also right yeah that that is as true, with yeah. age you grow and then you degrade also with age right mm, that's so, true yeah. right but if you mm-hmm. make that uh, you know give the instruction like using if else then they will be doing same thing again and again and again so mm-hmm. example what i give is let's say you tell somebody this is how you go to a airport okay mm-hmm. you go home take left take right take left take right take left take right and you'll reach airport 
Mm-hmm. Now, let's say after one year, you know, they're doing some repair work. Okay. And, you know, you what happened? Your, uh, whoever we are giving instruction, that guy will take left, take left, take right, take left, take right, and go into gutter. Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah, and that's because true. Mm-hmm. It's under repair and, you know, mind will not say, oh, it's under repair, it should stop. Because following if else. So that's mm-hmm. why if else is not good. We want it to say that if this is the red light, stop there. No matter where the red light is. Mm. If you see a stop sign, stop there. If you see a, you know, a sign of 10 miles per hour, you go at 10 miles per hour. Right? So then for uh, driverless cars, then we need to feed all the the entire map, <laughs> like, G- I mean, GPS, through GPS. Okay. So just the way we read, so we, did we go to, do you go to college before coming to, uh, do you go for training for coming to India, that this is how uh, I read map in India? No, right? Uh, no. Once you no. know to read the map, doesn't matter which location you are in, which map it is. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is human learning, and that's how we want machine to instruct. Mm, Maybe mm, you can make mistake. Okay. Mm, Not that you you won't make mistake. You will make mistake, and so does machine learning algorithms make mistake. But that mistake is accepted because you know, and and we'll we'll tell you we'll discuss this when we talk about uh, model mm-hmm. evaluation. We'll talk about um, overfitting, underfitting. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, Let, let's see this. Okay, now let's say you are hiring somebody of, for your work. Okay, somebody mm-hmm. who will report to you. Mm-hmm. There are two guys. Okay, mm-hmm. one guy has got 100% result in the graduation, other guy mm-hmm. has got 70% result in graduation. Whom will okay. you hire? Yeah, definitely 100%. Uh, but okay. if the 70% one has more experience, I'll go with the. No, so everything yeah. same, they're fresher. Pass out from oh, then college, it's definitely 100 percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now with hundred percent, if you come to know that this guy has got the question paper, he knew the question paper, and that's why hundred oh. percent. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, now, no. now, why I'm saying this is, okay, still he has got hundred percent. No, if getting hundred mm. percent is good, then knowing that he has got the answer, how does it matter? To you, to uh, you know, to hire him, and if that was so easy, then why do we have an interview process, right? Uh, you can directly uh, say, okay, apply everyone and pick the one with the higher marks. You can pick it without even uh, evaluation. evaluation. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. now, reason being, okay, let's say if I, okay, let's say you know mm-hmm. I didn't get question paper, but I read mm-hmm. only ten topics, okay. Mm-hmm. Luckily, all the questions all the 10 questions came from those 10 topics only. Yeah. I got 9,900. Mm-hmm. Another guy who has read everything, okay, he knows all the concept, but he's not so strong in few concepts. He got 80 or 75. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we want somebody for the job who is thinking person. Correct? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. the problems that you will get at the job is not the problems that you get in the textbook. Definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. If mm-hmm. if you get the problems in the textbook, then probably you hire the best, you know, highest scoring guy. Mm-hmm. But you want to make sure that guy did it get just by fluke or just by, you know, mugging up by hearting, you know, I by hearted mm-hmm. entire book, let's say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you ask me anything, I'll answer it. Yeah, yeah. But anything from the outside, book. Uh, yeah. But from outside, that... I will not be able to answer anything. Yeah. So. So you so even if it is seventy percent or sixty percent okay, you are okay, but you want somebody who's thinking. Mm. Okay, and we'll talk about it uh, when fraud detection. We'll talk about you know same thing. Okay, okay. Let me talk about it. Okay, you have two minutes, right? Mm. Let's do this and we'll wrap up. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Fraud detection. Okay, fraud detection happens once in ten thousand iteration or one one in one million iteration. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Look mm-hmm. at the transactions that are happening every second. You know there are millions of transactions happens every minute, but fraud mm-hmm. happens let's say once an hour. Right. Mm-hmm. So after mm-hmm. like almost like every hundred million or fifty million transaction, there is one fraud happening. So can yes. you ignore you know saying oh one in million is ninety nine point nine 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 percent accurate? Let's ignore mm-hmm. it. 